Hi, I'm Hannah Brown, and welcome to Better Tomorrow. My absolute favorite thing to do is have a heart-to-heart talk with my new friends and my best friends, where we sit down and talk about all the things like relationships and love, faith, and self-care. And of course, the little things as well, like the struggle to figure out what to eat tonight. All in all, I really want to ask, how am I better today than yesterday? And bring artists, entrepreneurs, and friends along on the journey. So join me on the journey, will you? bitch that's taylor swift let's go bitch i don't know it wait which song <laughs> no y'all didn't go what to the concert no. i haven't been to her concert I but you haven't concert, heard but i did watch the concert okay well that's like one of the little things but i that guess i wasn't chant. paying attention it's like one like she's doing a song and then like everybody goes one two three let's, let's go, go bitch Woo! and then she starts her song her her like thing well i have okay. my taylor swift um gems on my thought <laughs> so i feel like that counts <laughs> let's go bitch let's go, i bitch. think we should go to the taylor swift concert in london we'll get us some tickets wait, wait, have we that? started i've yet? been working on it okay <laughs> wait when is that though well it's the it's mm, this summer i think or this fall i mean let's just add the it tickets are impossible to our so list the tour of... is not over no oh i thought it's it was like, over like for the next like ever two years i feel like yeah oh. for the next ever Was it singapore <laughs> Well, we'll have to add it to our uh, many trips that we planned. Hey, guys, welcome to Better Tomorrow. I have two of my besties here with us today. Yeah. Nora. Nora's been on the podcast quite a few times now, but Annie's in town and Savon. Let's go, bitch. <laughs> Annie is here, um, and I'm so excited that you're in town and we've had a very short amount of time together, but I feel like we've got to talk and catch up so much. We've planned about how many trips have we planned? Probably uh, at least. Yeah. At yeah. least for the, just this year. Just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had to be like last night. I was like, okay, um, for me, I need to know, let's do like, let's like for, for real commit to maybe three and me and Annie are I like, saw your anxiety already coming yeah. in. Like, <laughs> I was even like, after one trip, you're like, wait, but which one first? Just, yeah. just one for now. <laughs> me and Annie are like, yeah, for sure. Huh? Let's do it. We already have like 15. Wait, oh. Also, we need to tell Anne Savon like why that was funny. I love oh. Savon. <laughs> okay. So Annie, well, it's so hard to get, go into it. I, How about you tell the story? Yeah, you got to tell the story because I never thought her name was Anne Savon. You did. (laughs) I'll tell the story. And I think that'll go into us telling who Annie is because she's one of the most badass people I have ever met. Oh, thank you. I tagged you on my story yesterday and so many people DM me like, wait, this girl is so cool. I was like, yeah, she is. Yeah. Thank you. Um, So I'm excited for everyone to be able to see you and hear your story and and see your resilience because you've just been through a lot and you've created a lot. And that's really cool. Thank you. So the story about Anne Savon, why that's so funny. <laughs> this is, is not Annie's name, no, first of all. it's not. Annie's, Annie's name is Anne Savon. Annie, Annie Wonderlich. Yes. But I personally, this is Nora talking, did not know that her last name was Wonderlich. And I met her through Hannah. And her Instagram handle was Anne's Van. <laughs> so <laughs> because A-N-N, I live in a van. Yes. She, <laughs> yeah. she, had a, she was creating a, like she was converting her van. Yeah. Um, and she'll tell us all about that because it's. But super she cool. hadn't really. You haven't really started posting about it that much yet. I, I was. You would, but you had, you just, had started. just started. At this, okay. So at this point, she had known me for a year. She had <laughs> been my friend <laughs> for a year. Okay, yes. it was. It was a year. Okay. No, no, no. Okay. That's true. It, it That's did not true. just start. It was a year in. in. But when I originally, and she was my friend <laughs> that flew in to do van life with me <laughs> to Idaho. <laughs> but when I originally met you. The handle, the Instagram handle, yeah. was Anne's van. Yeah. And you weren't doing van life content yet. You had your store. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Kenny. Mm-hmm. So my initial introduction to you was Anne's van <laughs> on Instagram. <laughs> and Hannah was like, this is my friend Annie. And then I got to know Annie and we hung out. We became good friends. So that I was just always Annie. I never really wondered what her last name was. <laughs> like, that just didn't cross my mind. <laughs> so then... Fast forward a year, I go on a van life trip with Annie because as you guys know, I'm a life coach and I saw Annie's life and I was like, dude, I think you're doing life right. Like, I think that is the best way to live is to be free and be who you really are and be creative and travel and do what you love. Um, And so I was like, can I come on van life with you? And she's like, sure. So I flew into Idaho. We did a 10 day trip together. We're like halfway through the trip and there's one I point. was invited on this trip, first of all, and I was like, 
You were maybe gonna come. No. I mean, for like, the hell no. It was, a, it was like, maybe. She was thinking, you were thinking. No, but then when I heard the sleeping arrangements, you were all gonna be on that one bed. <laughs> with Amy's dog and, and cat. With the dog and cat. I was like, absolutely <laughs> not. Y'all have fun. Yeah. But Nora it was. Cozy. was <laughs> We would have put you on a hammock outside. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I really would have taken that over all the other options, yeah. but I was like, okay, y'all have fun. <laughs> Nora's way more like a yes girl than I am, yeah. but I just knew this is probably not the time It was probably for me. best that you sat this one out. <laughs> It was, yeah. it was stories. It was a lot of it great was, stuff, but all, it was a lot of hardships. It was, it was but it, yeah. made it, it made us closer. It did. I'd say. But back to the answer okay. bond. Okay, story. so halfway through the road trip, again, we are so close at this point. There's something, I don't know, we were, white, we were whitewater rafting or my something. my friend Brian was, I heard you guys talking. We were at a, <laughs> we were at a little bonfire and I, you were to my left. You guys were talking about me. And, and he was like, by the way, what's Annie's last name again? Yes. And but, you but were it was like, for like a, it was, he was filling something out. It was like paperwork. It was like something paperwork that, on van life. Yeah, I think it was paperwork for the rafting trip. Oh, okay, okay. And it was like someone needed your last name. It was, <laughs> I remember it was Brian. And they were like, what's Annie's last name? And you weren't there. And I was no, like, I was there. But you were like behind. <laughs> anyway, I said, it's Savan. <laughs> Yo, yeah, it's Annie Savan. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? <laughs> he started Nora. writing it down. Savan. He's like, how do you spell that? I was like, S V A A N. <laughs> and Annie was like, what are you talking about? I was like, what are you talking about? I'm like, what do you mean? And then she said, my last name is Wonderlich. <laughs> But I was like, oh, I've always thought your last name was Savan because Anne's oh, van oh looks like gosh. Annie Savan on Instagram. Yeah. But you know what? I'm changing my last name. To Savan? To Savan. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, easier than Wonderlich. No, I love Wonderlich. Yeah, Wonderlich is strong. Oh, okay. It's cool. That's a cool last name. Okay. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, like Savan should be your middle name, maybe. Yeah, Anne Savan <laughs> Wonderlich. It's kind of cool. It's kind of like a strong name. I was name, like yeah. so excited to get married my whole life just so I could change my last name. Wow. Because it's so long. And it's hard. People are like, first of all, they're like, is it the Wonder League test for like football? <laughs> or they're like, wait, like they, just so, so many different pronunciations. Yeah, yeah. it's hard. <laughs> I love it. Thank you. Also, I'm, I was watching us have this conversation, watching y'all and how we were talking yesterday, yesterday about we, we work so well as friends <laughs> because we can follow the conversation. We have ADD, <laughs> all of us. All of us have ADD. <laughs> and there was like four... <laughs> Four actual stories and then the one, but I love it. It's great. Wait, Brian, what about there? There's probably different versions. It was a bonfire. We'll on too, yeah. Now I started thinking about maybe I wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I wasn't there after all. <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't quite remember, but I, I do either. remember Simon. Well, yeah. her, obviously, we, we, we know now that her name is not Anne Simon. It's Annie Wonderlich. Yeah. And I kind of want to go back to like how we met. Um, because I had just moved to LA. I did not really know anybody. Mm -mm. And I met you through one of your friends being my neighbor where I was staying. Yeah. And I think you like, I can't, you weren't there the first time I met them, right? But well, I remember exactly how I met you. Do you, I, do you want yeah, me to tell? Yeah, I want you to okay. tell. Yeah. Yeah. So I had watched your season on The Bachelor. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And I used to have those, you know, parties at my house every Monday night, whatever. Um, and I was at a restaurant on Abbot Kinney close to my shop. Oh, Zinke. Yeah. Zinke. Is it? It's Zinke. It's supposed okay. to be Zinke, think, but we, know, yeah. we don't call but it But I that. saw you and you walked in and I had, you know, probably a couple glasses of wine at this point. <laughs> and so I saw, you know, I looked over at you. I was like, oh my God, Hannah Brown. And like right away you like, were like, oh, like I don't know you. Right. <laughs> and, um, anyway, that, was, you my, were that with, was my moment with you. But that's when, but you were with. Like Jeff and Stu. Yeah, exactly. And I had met them. But I think I'd saw you. Well, it was the next week. So the next week we were at the same place, same table, same friends. Oh, this you was walked a in. Wait, I don't think I remember yeah, the first time. I remember time. all of it. So the first time you were like, uh, who are you? <laughs> and then the second time you walked in and I was like more quiet, tired. And you're like, hey, Annie, do you not remember this? <laughs> <laughs> you look, like, I blacked out a lot of that part of my life. <laughs> I just thought it was funny because like, I didn't mean to spit. The first time I knew who you were and the second time you knew who I was, but we had no interaction in between. So I don't even know how that happened. I wonder if it was because. Yeah. So I think I saw you with. I know why. It's because your your mutual friend that was my, my neighbor, y'all would be over at that house working out. And so I think like 
Oh yeah. With Jeff. With Jeff. Yeah. So I think I'd like seen you and then like I was talking with yeah. him. And so I think then I was like, okay, now I know who this girl is. Yeah. But I definitely remember like meeting or us finally like really talking at Zinc. Zinc Literally yeah. Zinc is where I met everyone I knew in LA. Same. That's it's pretty good. much where I lived yeah. all it's, COVID. But, it was yeah. the best. I do miss that so like much. That, yeah. There's like a lot of things that like I miss about yeah. LA. I'm like that that was a really good time in my life. But I think it was because of you, Annie. Like the only reason I like met people was being there, but then also like you're such a great connector. You're such a good oh, connector. Thank you guys. You're, Annie is the best connector and can make friends with like literally Anyone. everyone. And she'll also like meet a friend and she'll be like, this person, this person need to meet. Yeah. Like you're so good at that. Thank you. That is such like a superpower. But um, I remember like you, did you get my number or something and you invited me to? No, I DM'd you. And I was like, there's no way she's going to see my message. But I DM'd you. About the, um, about the dinner party. About the dinner party. Yes. And this dinner party was hilarious because I. <laughs> this is funny. This is funny. <laughs> so the neighbor guy was a very cute guy. Um, and he. Like, I really didn't know anybody. And that's when I was actually going through, like, getting the offer for my first book, God Bless This mm -hmm. Mess, and was working on the proposal for that. And I was just, like, in that house um, on Cabrillo, right behind Abbott mm -hmm. Kinney. And I was working on that. And we would see each other every day. And our mutual neighbor, there was, like, a house in between us, was trying to set us up this mm -hmm. whole time. Um, and so, anyway, she, if Jeff was out, I was out, she would be like, hi bring us together so we had been like not i don't want to say like talking but like we always you went like, on a couple dates we, we yeah but like yeah. very like chill dates yeah but still dates would you say their day i don't I know we went on like dates. a we went on a, a date walking to like great white and got coffee that's a, coffee that's a date, date. <laughs> <laughs> and then i found out that my book got picked up and I saw Jeff that day. And he, he was like champagne to your house, and he brought a bottle of food to the house. Dating. And then we're sitting there. Annie that same day has has asked me to go to this uh, dinner party, but I don't really know at anybody my house. at your house well, at my shop. Yeah, but. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know well, yet yeah, because my parents were coming in town, and so I'm talking to Jeff, and he's like, Hey, do you want to go to the beach um, tomorrow? And that was the same night as the dinner party. Um, dinner party and I was like I can't I'm actually my parents are coming in town um and I won't be able to make it so he invites me to the beach earlier that day and I was like but then not to, to the night party. but not to the night party which and, is my dinner party <laughs> <laughs> okay. he did not know I invited you to. <laughs> and he didn't know I was invited to the dinner party okay so I don't I, I'm like texting him um that day my parents come in we're like getting all my stuff set up because I this day was actually moving to a different um, house because I was staying at a friend's house. And then later on in the day, you know, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go to this dinner party. <laughs> Jeff's going to be there probably because they're and really I'm good friends. I'm oblivious of what's happening. I didn't even know she was, went on <laughs> dates with Jeff, to be honest. Yeah. I just knew Jeff was dating somebody else. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. So I'm thinking, yeah. I, this will be great. I'm going to go to this dinner party. Jeff's going to be there. I really want to get to know Annie. It'll be fun. Didn't get to go to the beach and hang out with them. So I get there and I remember seeing the look on Stu, our other friend's face when I walked in <laughs> being like, oh, Hannah, you're here. I was oh. like, yeah. And I walk in and Jeff is with there with another girl who has now ended up being One our, of our friend. friends. Yes. Um, and I was like, oh <laughs> my gosh. And Jeff sees me and he's like, oh, hey, Hannah. <laughs> I'm like, and I'm a like, literally have no idea what's happening. I'm just happy everyone's there. I have no idea that you feel awkward. Nobody knows. And I'm like, yeah. this is so weird because like he invited me to the beach. He did not ever invite me to this. And there's a girl here. Yep. And they're like hand in hand. Hand they in hand. They just like, got back from Montana together. And then I'm hearing all this. Yeah. I'm hearing yeah. like, Oh yeah, I forgot we're telling the stories. You were talking, about, talking the about them going on this trip. And, and I'm like, date with them the day, day before. It was so awkward. Yeah. And I'm there and I'm like, this is horrible but I got to sit I think I sat beside you and Stu and I got to like know everybody so much more and it ended up at the end of the night I tell y'all what happened yeah. but it was so funny actually I'm so th thankful for Jeff because 
I'm one of my best friends. Yeah. 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 So thank you, Jeff. You and I bonded that night. Like we talked a lot that night. I know. And then in the end, Lee is like one of our really good friends now. Totally. It didn't work out with him either. It shows how what girls girls we are. We really stuck together. That's true. Because like it was odd. Like she didn't know. And obviously she probably wasn't she happy had about no that. No idea. No idea. But even that night, she like opened up and like talked and like yeah. really bonded with yeah. us. And like, anyway, and she was cool about it afterwards too. Totally. So mm-hmm. really just Jeff got kicked out. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sorry. <laughs> Bye, Jeff. Uh, Bye. Um, and then honestly, I feel like we became inseparable. We did. Yeah. From then on, we became like little besties for the resties. It was so And you were fun. even telling me, which I didn't realize, but that was like one of the only moments you were ever really single, like- being able to go out and be single and like mm-hmm. talk to people and and you helped me so much actually Annie is the reason that I even met Adam because she set up my I hinge forced you on hinge wow. you did not want to go on hinge I forced you I'll never forget that was also <laughs> at so Zinc nice. yeah. yeah got stood up by that guy yeah. and you were there right and Annie came well yeah I, oh, yeah, I forgot yeah so I was You're finally nice. getting over this guy and I um he was supposed to meet me and never did. And I called Annie and she came as like a best friend would do and came and sat with me because he never showed. But we did a lot of fun stuff. And we're speed dating. Oh, <laughs> no, but my you, gosh. we booked a trip. Yeah. You literally booked my flight to Cabo and set up oh, my yeah. hinge profile. <laughs> and then we, I did, we did speed dating. But I was also going through a breakup too, remember? It was that Cabo was supposed to be for my <laughs> ex. Oh, it was for yeah. his birthday. And we still celebrated his birthday. You got a birthday cake for him. <laughs> And he wasn't even there. <laughs> it was awesome. So oh, yeah, we you've gone we've yeah. gone through a lot together. We have, and I feel like you really helped me make LA my home. Yeah, we and, had so much fun, and we had the best time. Yeah. Both being like single at the same time, you really helped me like start going on dates with people. And then as I've told on um, this podcast, how I met Nora is like then I like went yeah. and Nora like helped me did a YouTube show with me, but then also like helped me with dating. So like y'all two really helped me get into that like time of my life where like healing after all the like bachelorette stuff and the boys from that season and also just like all my crap before that and really like put myself out there. And then look at me now. Yeah, you, you, you get to you get to help us now. Yes. No. <laughs> Give us advice, wise one. Which you really do, Han. You hold both of us up. Yeah. Like I think we've all helped each other. Yeah. 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 I like agree. you have been a huge part of it too. Like yeah. you life coach you. <laughs> no, like I'm like yeah. the, y'all are probably two of the and Adam, like the best things that in that time of my life. Mm-hmm. Seriously. I'm so thankful. But I kind of wanted to like we've already talked about Annie being such a great connector and and Nora kind of touched on Annie being so resilient, but I kind of wanted to share more of your story. Like, obviously where we were, we we talked about how we met, but like, that was a big transition for you too. And you didn't realize I was And I didn't that. realize everything. Mm-hmm. But as Nora said, um, Annie, <laughs> Annie's uh, name on Instagram was Anne's Van. It still is. And still is. <laughs> it hasn't but changed. like, that, that kind of all started, like you changed that. And started to like yeah. change your whole life in the direction of it. So I thought it'd be great if you could just like share what was all happening when we met. Cause I feel like yeah. it was a very pivotal point and like kind of go into where you are now and how yeah. you've like pivoted and, and changed. Totally. And I think this will be helpful for people listening because I think sometimes I, I know for myself when I've listened to podcasts, I've been like, oh, well, they had this given to them. So that's why they were able to have yeah. the success or do this certain thing. But that's not true. No. And and I think your story really shows people yeah. like, no, actually you built this. Like yeah. you created this. And yeah. you had a lot of different pivots. Yeah. Um, in times that life was hard. And I really want people to hear that. Okay, I appreciate it. But yeah, during that time in 2020, COVID, a lot of people were struggling. I was definitely struggling. Um, I had just lost my business. So before I even met you guys, I had a flower business in LA doing events for a living. And so when March 11th happened, it shut down my entire events company, like just overnight, like in three days, shut it all down. I lost my entire company. And you were doing um, like big millions. Um, yeah, I was doing like, yeah, I was doing a lot of big huge installations. Events. I was on a ladder doing a Rachel Zoe event at Chateau Marmont. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When I found out things were happening and I didn't understand. Right. Mm-hmm. So and people were calling me just canceling event after event, wanting to deposit back, all that stuff. And so it was a very scary time. Um, and then. You know, I was supposed to be moving into my new apartment on March 15th. 
And we know that we could not, no one could move, right? So I couldn't get a U-Haul, couldn't move into a new apartment. So I essentially became homeless. I started sleeping um, on my friend's couches that would allow me to even come over because everyone was so scared. I started sleeping in rental cars. A lot of people don't realize that too. I'd rent mm-hmm. a car and I'd just sleep on the streets in Venice in a rental car, scared, had no blanket. Um, and then, yeah, like I would sleep like the, at my, this guy I just started dating. I just met him. So like I was sleeping at his oh, house. Oh, yeah, that guy. Michael, uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're friends. Um, but yeah, I just, I felt really trapped. Mm-hmm. Not only did I feel like a huge failure, but a lot of times when you're going through something like that big, I mean, none of us have gone through something like that before, you know, the mm-hmm. pandemic. You just feel like it's really only you. And during that time, I was really suffering internally. Like I just felt like the biggest loser, the biggest failure. I just lost my company. I have no money. I'm broke. I'm negative balance in my bank account. Mm-hmm. Now what am I going to do? Right? I have no home. I can't even go back home. And so, um, and so, yeah, that's when I started really dreaming about being free and what that meant to me. And like, you know, I just started thinking about my childhood and like, you know, the experiences with my dad, like he would always like be like, hey guys, you want to go to McDonald's? And next thing you knew, we were jumping in the car and we'd be on the road for three months and just sleeping in the van and like sleeping, you know, camping and stuff like that. And we did that all throughout my youth. We didn't have a lot of money, um, but it just made me like want that again. I craved that freedom again. So no matter how broke I was, even as a kid, I was happier then. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. So I was like, it doesn't matter about how much money I have. Let's now like figure out what's going to make you happy and feel free. And experience it. Yeah. yeah. And so that's when I started dreaming about van life. And I didn't have money, so I took a paper and pencil, which cost nothing. And I started just sketching out what I wanted to build and all the different requirements I needed, like height in case I get a boyfriend one day and he's tall, <laughs> like stuff like that, you know? <laughs> and so um, – I just started hustling. I started um, posting on my Instagram. I think back then I had like 15,000 followers, but with my flower followers, I was like, hey guys, Mother's Day is coming up. Buy flowers for me. There was no flowers available, you guys. I had a rental car and I'm like, where am I going to get the flowers from? Because LA is shut down. And so I had to go Whole Foods and I get really creative on the vases I would use, like mason jars. Like I get really creative. But I ended up raising, working my butt off, but raising enough money to buy this van I found online. Do you guys know this story? I don't know this story. I know you at all. don't. No. Yeah. And so I was like hustling. I was using like this guy, Michael, the guy I was kind of yeah. seeing. I was using his studio apartment to make these flower arrangements, like next to his bed because there's no room and like putting them in my little minivan that I rented and delivering them like all over LA myself. Like it was a wild Mother's Day, but I saved enough money for three thousand dollars. I went to go buy this van that I found online that I fell in love with, Anne's van, the one that you got to be in. Did you say um, three thousand dollars? Yeah, it was Wasn't four thousand originally, but I talked them down. <laughs> that, that is so <laughs> yeah, cool. Yeah, and so I showed up, and it was t- totally gutted, right? Um, so it was ready for me to start building. But um, I showed up, and I'm not gonna lie, you guys, I was shaking because it was my only three thousand dollars. I didn't have enough money for gas to get back. Like literally giving wow. them all my money I had that I worked so hard for, and I was like, okay, this is a big risk, but I'm doing it. And so I started like sleeping in that van, even when it was fully gutted. Like there was nothing in it. I didn't have the money to or space to build it out. So I started using my friend's workshop a little bit and his tools. I started working on the side of Abbott Kinney in front of my shop because I finally was able to move into my shop. Mm-hmm. I wasn't supposed to live there, but I kind of live there. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, like, yeah. I, I kind of live there. Uh, but I was also sleeping in my van outside of it. I was kind of going back and forth. Mm-hmm. But like, anyway, like, yeah, yeah, that whole year, you probably didn't realize it because, you know, LA is like that where you kind of like have to keep up with the Joneses and act like put this whole front on like you can't struggle Mm -hmm. and when I have a newer friend like you who's so successful and so cool and like I'm not going to tell you guys that kind of stuff that this might be my last 50 bucks you know what I mean like I'm going to have lunch with you and use my last 50 bucks to enjoy my lunch and so but that whole year was really interesting for me and so when I met you I was just kind of coming out of it Mm -hmm. because I was working in my shop yep and finally working again. So I was finally making money again. But I was still like focusing on my van on the side because I knew I wanted out. Mm-hmm. And that's when I hit the road and got into my van. So how yeah. did you even have like, for me, like the confident, I mean, I guess maybe the confidence comes from like not feeling like you have another option and just being like, I've got to make this work. Yeah. But had you done like that type of that type of, I don't know, like, I don't even like mechanical work, learning yeah. how to like build out, like, never. I mean, I kind of did. A freaking yeah. home in a van. Like, I, I would be like, I don't even know how to use t- a tool. Yeah. Like, I how- never built out a van before either, right? Yeah. yeah. I had no idea. I had little experience. Like, my dad was in construction. So he ma- used to make me lay brick as a kid okay. <laughs> or like lay sod or something. 
Um, and then, you know, as an adult with a flower company, I did have to learn how to use a drill again to make flower walls. Like, so there's a little yeah. bit of experience. But I think in the end, like what it really came down to, especially as a female and as a woman and like um, doing something that typically you would want a guy to do. Because I'm not going to lie. A lot of times I would wait. Like, I'm going to wait to build up my fans. I might meet a guy and he'll help me. And like, I would do, say all those things. Right. Mm -hmm. um, but after a while, you get tired of waiting and you just want to do it yourself. Um, and so instead of walking into Home Depot, we we're talking about this last night, instead of walking into Home Depot looking for a husband, I started walking into Home Depot feeling like I'm a badass bitch. I'm going to do this myself. <laughs> Hell yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so it was just about getting the confidence because I did feel dumb and silly walking into Home Depot going, oh, am I, you know, do I look silly and dumb asking these questions? And this is actually kind of funny, you guys, but when I walk into Home Depot, I get stopped a lot by other men and they talk to me for like, 20 minutes wasting my time when I'm there just there to shop because there's not a lot of women there. Are they hitting on you? Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, yes. Ladies, listen to I, that. I, I know. No, totally. I, Home Depot is a place to go. One time I wore a beautiful yeah. dress there like after <laughs> church and I'm telling you, I had like four men stop oh, me yeah. and I was like, and, and um, were Adam you with did, Adam? Yeah. No, he didn't come with oh, me and I, I, was like, you. Oh. I was like, oh, you know, you should have come to me to Home Depot because there are a lot of men that love being at Home Depot with yep, me, babe. Yep. Yeah. So it's the if place you won't, to go. someone else will. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's true. And so like there's not a lot of women there, especially yeah. women that walk in with their hair done, nails done. Yeah. Like I have my nails done. Yeah, even with <laughs> even if I had a broken hand. <laughs> um, but even like, you know, doing construction, that's one thing I will not get rid of is my being feminine and mm -hmm. being who I am and wearing makeup and getting my hair done and doing my nails. So even building out my van. I made sure I kept that part of me too. Yeah. And yeah. You're, you, you're, your style is so much in your van. I think that's why yeah. your van is so fun to watch it's online. Because mm -hmm. it's an art project. It's it is. beautiful. Thank you. You really brought yourself into it. It's like having your own room at your parents' house when you're a kid and you finally get to decorate yourself. Yeah. I felt like that very that's much. That's cool. Yeah. So when did you start like – was it always in your mind when you were like, got this van, like, okay, I want to be able to document this online and maybe like – get into this community of like like van life people like you have like a full community like did yeah. you did you know that through like researching when you were going to get your own van and was like okay I want to get into this and so I'm going to like yeah. figure out how to document this as I figure it out yeah so when I first started um when I first got my van I think hashtag van life was pretty new yeah there wasn't a lot of van life influencers back then there were maybe a couple but they weren't really it was just starting I feel like yeah yeah it was just starting um, because I think it started after in COVID because COVID, that people wanted yeah. to get on the road yeah. and like see things Have and experience space. things I think there's yeah. a group of us that really started it right yeah you met some of them mm -hmm. and so um but yeah so for me like I'm not gonna lie I don't like a lot of attention and so being even on the front of the front of the camera talking like, i remember that i get, you get shy. really shy and yeah. so and also too i've never wanted to be on tv and things like that so for me having to put myself out there was never something that i wanted to do but i knew that um when i changed my name to Ann Ann's van i almost said Ann's <laughs> <laughs> um it was more of a joke to be honest it was a joke for my friends because my i remember that it was a joke remember it was a like joke. yeah they were like we saw annie at this time it was yeah. a whole group chat but no, so I never was like, okay, I'm going to be become a content creator influencer. It was more a joke, right? Mm -hmm. But then when I decided to do the real thing, and by the way, I was embarrassed. I was embarrassed of the van. So I did get mocked and made fun of. So even yeah, though I it remember was a joke, people would make fun of it, but like you time. were, be but now I know, like it was like, no, like this is like, it kind of hurt me a little serious, bit, but I would yeah. laugh about it. I didn't make fun of you. No, no but the boys but did. But the boys definitely did. All the time. Yeah. And so, um, but Those yeah, suck. I, mean, I know. <laughs> so for insane. a long time, I couldn't share my dreams with, yeah. anybody because I didn't feel like I would be empowered in it to be honest and I felt silly almost and like I didn't really want to tell people I was leaving LA but I knew I was leaving LA mm -hmm. I wasn't really ready to make the jump but um that being said um putting it on Instagram was never my goal I actually fought it for a long time mm -hmm. so even when I did hit the road on December 31st actually January 1st 2021 so the very beginning of the year um I fought it for a long time I fought it for like at least six more months and then finally I just started seeing all the different van life people making money and I was like I'm broke I can't even <laughs> eat what am I doing you know make money like you know what I mean like why are you not sharing your life and that's when I really started making content geared towards van life and mm -hmm. becoming an influencer you know so there's a lot that goes like first of all you're building out this van you have no money, but there's also a lot that goes into like getting yourself ready to be like a creator. Like, yes, thank goodness you can have your iPhone, but you like really taught yourself. Oh yeah. How to do it all yourself. Like for me, 
you know, we got producer Andrea over here. I've got people that like help me make sure that I can get stuff out in the world, but you did it all yourself. Can you kind of talk about like, even with the van life, I feel like you really utilized like what you, what we all have, which is our phone and YouTube. Like, how did you figure out how to do all this? Oh, I think I've always kind of had an eye for a little bit just because with the flowers, right? So creative and stuff. So I had to do stuff for the flower stuff on Instagram. It's always kind of knew how to make things look visually appealing, right? Mm -hmm. Um, And back then, Instagram, it all was visually appealing. It's Mm -hmm. not like how it is now, right? Mm -hmm. Everything had to look perfect. You literally helped me with my own Instagram. You'd be like, you have to post today. Let's find some pictures. Here's (laughs) how to edit them. (laughs) So during 2020... Yeah. In 2021, Annie was probably picked out all the pictures that were on my Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. probably. And I probably took some. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but no, I um the first thing I did was I started talking to other creators in my niche and joining them on trips. So if they're like going to Italy or doing whatever, that was later on actually. But yeah, if they were going on a trip or doing something, meet up with other van lifers, I would learn by watching them. I would learn by looking at their stuff, not copying per se, but just seeing what they were doing to understand like how to make content because mm-hmm. how to make content is really hard sometimes, even now it's ever changing. Um, so yeah, I just, I bought a camera. Um, I started using my cell phone and I just started taking photos and editing based on what I learned from my friends, to be honest, mm-hmm. um, or what I saw online and YouTube. And you were um, testing things out. You're testing like things out. And you're like, this didn't work. This yeah. worked. And funny, funny thing about my camera is a lot of people don't know this either, but um, I had to pawn it because I was broke. <laughs> there was a time I, did, no. I didn't have money. So I had to go sell it to some guy at a coffee shop. And yeah, and then I didn't have a camera for a long time because I had no money. So yeah. Wow. And that, yeah, anyway, that was my struggle. <laughs> when did yeah. you start to see things change? Um, I would say it was right before I turned 40 when was things were changing. I think being 39 and feeling for me I felt like almost a fraud because I felt like everyone I'm hanging out with everyone that's a content creator influencer they're all in their 20s which is great but I'm not right I'm 39 I'm struggling I'm struggling with money with ego with all these things am I going to meet someone am I going to have kids there's a lot of things going on in my head I'm also putting this life on Instagram that looks perfect and curated and it's hard and I remember you were one of the first people that said that to me you came on the van life with me in Idaho. And at the end, you're like, oh, so a lot of this is kind of like fake. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, but it called me out a little bit, you know what I mean? But I already kind of felt that way. And like, so that's when I really wanted to like start showing my real life and my real struggles. And that's when I started feeling empowered to do so was when I was 39. And I was like, okay, I'm going to start sharing my age because everyone thinks I'm in my 20s. Everyone thinks I'm a trust fund kid. Everyone thinks my life is perfect. I'm wearing these pretty dresses. But it's not like it really is hard. Like I'm broke ass. Like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like I no one knows this. So that's when I started really sharing my struggles. What turning turning older, how that feels, aging, how that feels, not having somebody and thought I'd be married with kids by a certain point, how that feels. Um, and just like instead and taking that pain that I was feeling, because a lot of times I was sad in my van, crying at night to my to myself to sleep. Um, taking that um, sadness and trying to use it to now empower other people. And that's when I started posting that stuff. And that's when my Instagram started growing. It started becoming more authentic. And that's when I started making more money. <laughs> <laughs> and being yeah. able to to yeah. like kind of like live your life yeah. in a way that I feel like when you're in such a struggle, um, I just want to like validate like probably why it took you a little bit of time to just be able to be yourself. Like when you're in so much struggle, like you had financial stuff going on, personal things going Mm -hmm. on, you're just having to grin down and bear it and just like get through it. And Mm -hmm. I feel like you were in such a like fight for your life type situation for so long. What what, was there like a breaking point or like, was there a moment that you were like, like, what was the moment? Not just 39, but like, was there a moment that you're like, okay, I can't keep up this anymore because it I know what it feels like to like show up one way and not just be even called out by friends but then to like feel that like I can't, this friction of like I can't do this anymore yeah. what what was that for you I know exactly when it was yeah. um it was four months after I left LA full-time mm-hmm. van life still wasn't wanting to be an influencer right but need to make money need somehow to, yeah. is when I had my brain aneurysm mm-hmm. that was my turning point like that was definitely stemmed from stress and holding things in and not letting myself 
you know, like it was definitely stress, stress induced. And so, yeah, I went to the hospital, went to the ICU. Um, I had a couple of brain bleeds in, in my brain, but obviously they stopped. Um, and I remember leaving the hospital and like, oh, I'm going to cry right now. But like the first thing I did was I asked my mom, oh my gosh, is there yay? Take me to a flower garden. Mm-hmm. And so we went to like a tulip festival. And then after that, we went to a lilac garden in Washington State. And like, I just want to be around flowers and like walk around a garden. And I remember like my mom was treating me like I was like made of glass. Like I didn't, she didn't mm-hmm. want me to hurt myself. I was like, you know, you had a brain aneurysm, you could die. And I had just started van life and that was my dream. And I remember laying down like on this makeshift bed upstairs in her house because we had no furniture. And I was actually, it was, I was on the floor. Um, and I was looking out the window and I remember just like crying and thinking, am I just going to lay here waiting to die? Like no one's letting me do anything. I can't do anything. No, I'm going to get back in my van. You know what I mean? Like I, I'm, I am scared. I am scared. I have another brain aneurysm. I am scared of all these things happening to me, but this is like my moment now to finally live the life of freedom that I've been wanting this whole time, but I've been holding myself back and that's through my own stresses and holding everything in. And so that was like my first turning point. Was it like a night and day shift? No, it took more time for sure of working on myself, probably actually two more years. But um, that was when I finally woke up, though, and it's like, okay, Annie, start making content on Instagram, start making money, start humbling yourself. Your LA life is no longer like get rid of that ego. It's time to just move forward with this dream that you have. Yeah. I think that's. I'm. Thank you so much for yeah, sharing. Yeah, sorry, like, I didn't mean to cry. No, <laughs> just, I know that. I like, never talk about that. I know, yeah, I know you, you don't, don't even with us. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's hard for you to talk about yeah. because yeah. you were kind of away from friends too at that time and I think I mean nobody you, you could have died yeah like I mean scary. I lost my vision yeah yeah, yeah and, it was wild. Yeah. and that's why I just I am mm-hmm. so impressed by you because you didn't let that stop you and you actually like use that as a, a catalyst a lot of people would yeah. s- still be on the floor staring at the window and that's yeah. something that I'm just what could you say to somebody mm-hmm. that's has found their self, first of all, like in a, you've been through medical situations yeah. that make you feel like, I don't know how to get up the next day. You've been through, through financial situations. You've been through re- relationships yeah. that would, for a lot of people, would not be able to do yeah. what you've done. Mm-hmm. What is like just a word of advice or encouragement? that you could give somebody that's kind of fi- that is finding themselves in that situation right now yeah. and is leaning towards like, I don't know if I can get up and go the next day. Well, it's the same advice I give my niece um, is, well, number one, I told her to fall in love with as many things as you can, whether mm-hmm. I, it doesn't have to be a boy or girl or like, it could be a moment, it could be a thing, whatever it is, just fall in love as much as you can in life. Mm-hmm. So that's my number one thing that keeps me going is try to find love in things. Um, and falling in love with things. Um, but also to just to, things are going to be hard. Like, you know what I mean? But someone else is going through something harder. So that's usually what gets me through stuff is I think about what I'm going through. I process like how I'm feeling about it. But then I also try to have empathy for others around me that might be going through something harder. And I think about them getting through it and moving forward, right? Because mm-hmm. I could be that Annie laying down, looking out that window, look, watching life pass me by, or I could be the Annie getting back up and just living life. Mm-hmm. And I want to live life. I feel like life is so amazing. I love life. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that just find like even as we get older, like as I, now I'm 41, about to be 42 this year, I think like finding like being a childlike and like finding how to be young and like youthful and just keeping that energy going, no matter how old you get, I think keeps you going through the hard stuff too. I think you would you I feel like Annie keeps me young. <laughs> I, I totally agree. Like anytime anytime I spend time with you, I'm like, oh my gosh, that was so much fun. Aww, yeah. I love you guys. And like I, I love your um advice about like falling in love with things. Cause I yeah, do feel yeah. like you really um you have like found interest and love in so many different things. And I, I've told you both about this. I can't remember if I've talked about this on the podcast. I know on my Instagram, like that's one thing my therapist like really wants me to work on. Cause I can be so like timid and mm-hmm. scared cause I don't want to fail. And I think sometimes when you've had these failures, you don't have as much fear yeah. Yeah. to like, mm-hmm. it, 
get back up. Mm-hmm. And I, I've definitely had failures in my life to get back up. But sometimes I can be the person. Yep. I've found myself there's moments where I'm like, I don't want to show up that way anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm scared to show up. And mm-hmm. I've had like a big um challenge for myself to start trying new things and 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 being okay. Like even I told you, um, I'm like, yeah, I find myself when I'm doing flowers, just like smiling yeah. and yeah. I want to get into it. And you're like, it's totally. things that make you happy. Yeah. And, that and you love. instead of trying to do it perfect. And trying yeah. to do it perfect. Yeah. And yeah. then also you're like, we can also do it together. And I'm like, perfect. But like, yeah. even I remember you telling me how you learned how to do even your, your floral business. Like, yeah. I learned how to do it on YouTube. You, yeah. And, <laughs> Which and is so that. cool. Yeah. And yeah it, it's, it's, it's a gro- it, You just yeah. have such a growth mindset. Yeah. Thank and you. when you've gotten knocked down, which everyone will, like mm-hmm. every person listening to this, it's inevitable that yeah. there's going to be pain that happens. Yeah. And I hate, I remember the first person that told me that I was like, F you, I hate hearing <laughs> yeah. that. Like, I want my life to be perfect yeah. all the time, but it's like, it won't. No. Um, but it's how we react to yeah. it. And, and I, you, yeah. you've reacted to it in such a empowering way. Well, thank you. Mm-hmm. And I always say like, I'm not scared of being poor because I've been poor before. But what I really mean by that is like I'm not a fel- afraid of failure because I've failed so many times before. Mm-hmm. But in the end, you just pick yourself back up and yeah. try again. Yeah. Take a risk. One of my yeah. favorite quotes is success without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. Mm-hmm. And I think that's true. Like a lot of my clients are like outside looking in, they're really successful, mm-hmm. but they're coming to me for a reason. They feel yeah. like yeah. kind of lost. They don't know their direction. They don't know their purpose. They don't yeah. know what's next. They don't feel fulfilled with what they're doing in their life. And that, man, like, it that sucks really bad because then you not only don't feel fulfilled, but you also feel like this almost golden handcuffs yeah. of like, well, I can't move because I'm I have the quote unquote success, mm-hmm. but you really don't. Like mm-hmm. success is like you're saying, it's in each moment, am I fulfilled? Am I living according to my values? Yeah. Am I doing what I love? Like if I love my flowers, success I'm doing is not flowers. stemmed on my bank account anymore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it does not matter how much I have. It's about like how I'm living my life and how yeah. I'm presenting myself to the world. So even like when I talk about Instagram. I even say like things like, what do I want to present to the world this year Mm -hmm. on my Instagram? I really think about things. I love that. Yeah. I kind of want to just kind of close the loop of like where you've gone and what you've done and because you've now created a new business. I have. Through sharing very vulnerably about what you're doing, traveling the world. So can you kind of share about like how you came up with this new business, how the past, you know, three years what yeah. have you learned and how how you're doing this differently? Yeah. So for me, like when I started this new business, it's group travel, right? Yeah. So it's group travel um, with it, different content creators, athletes, celebrities, whoever's hosting it. But the reason why I started it is I'm not going to lie, guys. I was feeling lonely. Mm-hmm. I was really, really lonely. I wanted to make friends, especially women, like even my own age group, right? And so like I started putting some group trips together in general um, just so I can meet other people. And so I did one in Bali. I did one in Texas for my birthday. I did a women's summer camp, which was so much fun. And it was at my family property in Washington. Um, And that was the one that really made me want to start this company. Um, Just because everyone left, there's 30 women, everyone left feeling so empowered from the weekend. Like we all were holding each other crying. Like, and I realized that everyone came needed something from they all came for a reason right mm-hmm. they were searching for something and they weren't sure what it was but i think by the end of it they, we all figured it out we wanted community mm-hmm. and so now we host a bunch of group trips all over the world with different hosts not just me but even this summer we're doing a, another summer camp and i hope nora can be involved i'll on be this there one. yeah i know uh but it's gonna be for 125 women and so it's kind of like what i was saying earlier about like making sure we stay young and be youthful the rest of our lives um, but the summer camp is for adults, but we're going to be doing childlike things. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, is that answering your question? Totally. No, I'm like <laughs> so proud of you and like all the work that you've done yeah. and also started this from the ground up. I think it's just good for people to hear. I know for myself, like I'm so inspired by hearing people like reinvent themselves so many times. And as you're falling in love with things, like really allowing that to like be to, like a part of your life like how do you build that in that love yeah. in and I feel like you've really just done that I kind of want to go back to um being single in a van <laughs> solo travel yeah what are some of the like hardest things that people might not expect about being on the road yeah. by yourself 
Oh, because it can um, seem like kind of how Nora yeah. was like, oh, it can it can seem like it's so awesome and so cool looks, and yeah. and there is a lot it's of freedom, hard. but it's, it's hard. really hard. It's really hard, um, especially when you're out like in nature and like away from like, society. Like in Venice, that was easy. Living on the side of the street in Venice, that's easy. I, mm -hmm. I, I get why there's so many homeless people. <laughs> uh, I get it, <laughs> but like in nature, it is hard because like you have all these people on Instagram calling you a badass. That you're by yourself but no you're scared you're scared yeah. like wow. you know what i mean like, like how did alone. you like protect like did you think of ways to like protect yourself like yeah i mean i have like little weapons and stuff yeah. but like the same time like i got my dog for that reason but i got yeah. a golden retriever it's not like i got a rat, 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 whatever it's called but yeah i <laughs> I got a golden retriever, which is you pretty much. Um, and a cat. And a cat. I am a golden retriever. Um, <laughs> Hannah's the cat. No. Yeah. No, no, you're not a cat. <laughs> but yeah, just being in the middle of nowhere and like trying to feel like a badass that you feel like you are, but also being scared and you can't sleep at night. Every sound scares you. Yeah. Um, so that, that's a hard part to stay clean. Used to it? Um, like the fear, like, does it go away? I think you get used to it sometimes mm -hmm. just if you're there in one place long enough oh. but still like every time someone drives by you're always suspicious like but i did keep my van kind of ugly on the outside for that reason i, I remember wanted, you saying I wanted that. it to look like i was an old scary homeless man don't bug me um <laughs> you kept the like stickers like the harley davidson oh yeah, yeah. i wanted to look out. masculine from the outside. but inside it was yeah. adorable but yeah. But, yeah. yeah i take a lot of safety precautions so a lot of safety precautions with my van like i don't like people seeing me for example so I don't like them seeing me walk into my van. If someone has seen me and I look, feel like they looked at me too long, I will move my van somewhere else. Mm -hmm. So that way they can't see me or find me later on. Um, I think that part, I think the loneliness is really hard. I think uh, it feels freeing, but by yourself, you do get lonely, yeah. even mm -hmm. with pets. Totally. And, and you're that's just alone with your thoughts in the middle of nowhere without any service. You know what yeah. I mean? And I think that's why the community, like going on those, yeah. gr and those group trips together. that you did. And yeah. then now like, building that into like what you've learned and like loved in life yeah. being able to give that to other people, I think is really cool. Yeah. Well, thank you. Um, last thing kind of just want to ask about, you said that 39 was really hard for you and, um, kind of grieving the loss of a life that you thought you were going to have. Oh yeah. We talked about this last night. What was life that you thought you were going to have? Yeah. And then what do you love about the life that you've created? Yeah. So, just because I did grow up poor, money was like always like a main focus of my life, like mm -hmm. just building this big business in LA, making a lot of money. So I was convinced I was going to be a millionaire by the time I turned 40. That was just a goal of mine. Yeah. I'm embarrassed of it now. Um, but I thought I was going to be married to like a really beautiful husband and really successful husband. And I was going to have kids and a big, beautiful home. And just pretty much everything well, that you everything, want on paper, right? Everything most of yeah. us like. That we've been conditioned. Conditioned yeah. to, to think believe that we is. Want the perfect life that we should all strive for. Exactly. Yeah. Society tells us that. My parents told me that, you know, I was supposed to get married at a young age in my family. Like it's not good to get married older. And so for me, um, I felt like a failure. I felt like mm -hmm. a failure because I didn't have money. I felt like a failure because I was living in a van. My mom was embarrassed of it, to be honest. I felt like a failure because I didn't have kids. And so when I turned 40, it was really rough on me because like all these built up of emotions. And I remember being in my van crying but I also remember going to my sister's house with anxiety and I broke down in her living room in front of my brother-in-law. He's like, are you crazy? <laughs> I broke down crying on my knees, bawling. Oh, the first thing I said was, I never told you guys this. I go, who's going to take care of me when I'm old? Mm -hmm. And I was just, my voice cracked and I was sobbing. My nieces all looked at me though. We will, we'll take care of you. And I love that. But I was like, but no, I was like crying over the thought of like maybe not having that life mm -hmm. maybe not having kids I had to like really embrace that thought and be like okay maybe I'm not gonna have kids after all I lost my chance mm -hmm. maybe I could still could I don't really know um but then grieving the loss of maybe yeah getting married and mm -hmm. becoming a millionaire by the time I turned 40 <laughs> like you know what I mean mm -hmm. like yeah it was just everything I thought I was gonna have was now gone mm -hmm. in a matter of like one day it was one day mm -hmm. so then you started sharing more about where you're at in life mm -hmm. so what and I feel like that's been where you've created a lot of community so what has that like brought to your life like the the positives of being able to like I feel like now you really embrace like where you are yeah. 
I know I've talked about Instagram a lot, but I'm not going to lie. It's helped me a lot. Mm -hmm. So it's become my own little therapy vessel, if that makes sense. So Mm -hmm. like even when I post on there, it's therapeutic for me. Mm -hmm. I post and I'm crying the rest of the day. It takes a lot of emotion out of me. So I guess what it has brought me is first of all, realizing that society puts so much pressure on women. Mm -hmm. It's not real. Mm -hmm. It's not real. It's It's so not real. So we put it on ourselves even more. Mm -hmm. And so even though... And, and especially because yeah. those women that have followed that cookie cutter, not all of them, of mm-hmm. course, but some of them have followed the cookie cutter process of like, get married, marry a successful yep. man, blah, blah, blah. A lot of them aren't living the life they really want to live. A lot of them are following me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And going, ah, like talking to me, like wanting to live life. I'm living a freedom and all yeah. these things. So we all want what we can't have, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. Grass is always greener. Exactly. And so like I do, a lot of those women are my friends, yeah. right? They had married, uh, got married really young, had kids really young, still are married, right? And so they don't feel free. So they look at my life as freedom, but I look at their life as stable. And so like <laughs> there's a middle ground, yeah. Yeah, I've realized. I so I've learned there's a middle ground. And that's what this year I'm going into is being more open. I think I've been a little bit more closed off this last year. So I want to go into this year like, you know, maybe I am open to love, it, but it doesn't have to look like the what, the love I thought it was going to be. Yeah, it could perspective be, shift. Yeah, I could still get a husband. Yeah, yeah. It's not too late, right? I could fall in love later in life. Yes, you yes. can. I can still have kids. Maybe it's adoption. Yes. Yeah, I mean, there's different like views of like what my life could be to be successful still. I think that, yeah. So. The saying like grass is always greener. I love the shift of mm-hmm. the grass is green where you water it. Mm-hmm. And that no matter where you are in life, whoever's listening to this, like if you're married and have kids and or maybe your van life or maybe it's 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 green where you where you love yourself mm-hmm. and yeah. where you honor your needs True. and where you have really honest conversations with mm-hmm. yourself, with, your, with friends. your friends, with your support system. Like you had when you broke down um, at your sister's and your nieces were like, we'll yeah. take care of you. Like. That yeah. honesty is honesty with self. And when we hide that, it just like builds. Mm-hmm. It's almost like um, I always think of the analogy of a hose. And when we don't let our honest emotions, thoughts, fears, desires, excitements, happiness, whatever, when we don't let it out, it's almost like we're blocking the hose. Yeah. And then what happens when you block a hose? It builds up. <laughs> and then it like pops out in other insidious ways. And you have a brain aneurysm. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> like literally. Yeah. But yeah. actually, like I think it builds up energetically. It builds up emotionally. Yeah. It builds up relationally. You might start snapping at friends or mm-hmm. loved ones or this or that. And you're like, or pushing people away. That's what I did. Away. Exactly. I pushed everyone away. Exactly. Even and I think that. it's mm-hmm. like yeah. opening the hose, like la- mm-hmm. letting every one of those emotions come out. But we haven't been trained to know like how to honor our own emotions. Like no one yeah. talks mm-hmm. about like, oh, when you feel sad, you actually can talk about it or it's okay to cry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's why I love following your content because you really Thank now you. have shown like, oh, I am talking about taboo things or things that women like are scared to talk about. And it just makes me as yeah. a follower and a friend, of course, feel less alone Thank and feel you. like, oh my gosh, that. this fear can come out and I yeah. can talk about it and I don't have to um, yeah. hide it. Yeah. yeah. I love your story Thank and you. I love how you're showing up now and being so open about the struggles that you've had and all the different ways that you've and all the different lessons you've learned. And I really love Aww. the Annie that you're showing up for. Um, I love you. For your community, <laughs> but how you're yeah. showing up for your friends. And I think it's really learning kind of what Nora said, that like loving your life where mm-hmm. it is now. Yeah. And not giving up hope for what still could be. Exactly. It's like leaving that open space. Yeah. And I think that that is where we're, you'll, you'll really see the growth and really be able to appreciate all that's happened. And it's just really cool to see you doing that. And I'm just so excited for more people to be able to like experience um, all the life that that you've created for yourself um, as they like follow you. And hopefully like people are inspired to like create community around them and find community and whatever they, they love to do. And I'm just really proud to call you friend and so thankful thank for you. you. So thank you for I coming on the podcast. So love you, Annie. Thank y'all for listening. We love you so much. Bye. Bye. (laughs) Thank you guys so much for listening to the episode. Better Tomorrow is produced by me, Hannah Brown, and Legos Creative. Our producer is Andrew Stalmer. Our show is recorded, engineered, and edited by the Legos Creative team. 
Remember to follow Better Tomorrow wherever you get your podcasts so you don't miss the next episode. And don't forget to rate and review us on Apple Podcasts. It really helps and shows your support. You can follow me on socials at Hannah Brown and you can stay updated on all things Better Tomorrow on our Instagram at Better Tomorrow and our TikTok Better Tomorrow podcast.